how to speak up for yourself and stand your ground with a destructive narcissist. You ready? Let's do it. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tammy M. Joyce. I'm the founder of Tammy M. Coaching and the creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. If you'd like to learn more about how you can become a coaching client or work with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. So let's talk about how to speak up for yourself and stand your ground with a destructive narcissist. Lord knows if there's anyone who can be a dominating, controlling bully, it's someone with a destructive narcissist personality pattern. And if you've been on the receiving end of a narcissist's antics and tactics for any length of time, it may very well be that you are so beaten down that you feel like you've lost your voice entirely. And although it's true that the narcissist is fully running their own agenda, which does not include treating you fairly, and it certainly doesn't include hearing you, understanding you, cooperating with you, or validating your feelings and perspective of reality. If that's what you're waiting for, know in advance that you're wasting not only your time, but also your precious vital life force energy, trying to be heard by someone who has zero desire to hear you. Never mind see you, understand you, relate to, or as I said, validate you in any way. And although I fully believe that more often than not, we're far better off holding our tongue and not engaging at all, the truth is that there are times where you really do need to speak up for yourself, stand up for yourself, advocate for yourself, and stand your ground, come what may. You didn't come to the planet to be someone's emotional punching bag, dumping ground, or personal garbage bin. So yes, safely and effectively, you want to be able to speak up for yourself when it counts, but you also want to be able to shut the hell up and not say a word when that serves you too. Don't forget that. Standing up for yourself is fundamentally about telling the truth in terms of what you want and need. It's about being honest and truthful and speaking up for your own needs and personal well-being emotionally and otherwise. It's about boundaries, preferences, and standards. And don't believe what you've been told by the narcissist. You are allowed to have standards in terms of how you want to be treated and what you're willing to put up with. And the more clearly we can communicate our very legitimate and healthy wants and needs, those boundaries, preferences, and standards, the better off we'll be. So in order to be effective, you want to stand up for yourself in a way that isn't aggressive or hostile and doesn't come with your own agenda. Just speak the truth as you see it, feel it, as you know it, want it, and need for it to be. In other words, just come out with it period. No going along to get along, no sugarcoating, no dancing around the issue, no over explaining and defending yourself, your wants, your needs, your personal boundaries, preferences, and desires, and absolutely no overriding what is fundamentally your truth. Remember, this is about advocating for yourself. If you don't advocate for yourself when it really matters, when it matters most, nobody else is going to do it for you. And this is especially true if you've been cast as the family scapegoat in your own family of origin or with your in-laws for that matter. So say what you need to say clearly without trying to sugarcoat anything. When you try to soften the blow by sugarcoating what you really want and need to say, by minimizing what's really going on and the negative impact it's having on you, know that you've entered the zone of enabling really bad behavior. And don't be that person. Enablers are a big part of the problem in the realm of narcissistic abuse. Instead, realize that healthy, decent, kind, genuinely loving and sincere people will be happy with and grateful for your honesty. They'll welcome the clarity. In fact, they'll respect you more for it, not less. Narcissistic types, on the other hand, well, they'll show you who they are in response to your standing up for and advocating for yourself. They'll show you exactly how little your feelings, your comfort, your well-being, and your best interest matter to them. And that will be a whole lot of information for you to work with and base your decisions on moving forward. 
I know what I decide when it's clear I'm dealing with someone whose nose is so firmly embedded in their own navel that they can't even begin to consider how I might feel in a situation, never mind actually care. Remember, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. These people don't change. Hear me? They don't change. Here's the thing. Whenever you try to soften the blow, it always turns out worse, not least of which for you. Trying to manage the situation or someone else's reaction instead of just coming straight out with what needs to be said doesn't tend to end well, and it certainly won't get you what you want and need. And although it's true that speaking your truth clearly may not end well either when dealing with a destructive narcissist, at least you will have had the benefit of saying what needed to be said, advocating for yourself, and clearly explaining and defining where your line in the sand is crystal clear communication. So do yourself a favor and start saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Practice when the stakes are low so that when the stakes are high, you'll have some experience under your belt and you'll be able to do so with more confidence. If you can tell the truth from a place that is grounded, honest, calm, clear, and loving, you can save yourself and everyone else a ton of aggravation as well as wasted time and energy. Don't create unnecessary drama by dancing around the issue or backpedaling the moment there's some pushback. Stand tall and stand firm. Safely, of course. Choose your battles wisely and never put yourself in unnecessary danger. But neither should you be going through life walking on eggshells or tippy-toeing around a toxic bully for fear of confrontation. Please, just speak your truth as clearly and succinctly as possible by just getting to the point. In order to be heard, in order to be taken seriously, you can't be dancing around the issue. You've got to get to the point and do so with as few words as possible. Remember, crystal clear communication. One thing about bullies is this. The moment they realize you aren't having it, they back down. Now, being the snakes in the grass they tend to be, for sure they'll retaliate by smearing you behind your back to anyone who will listen. You can count on that. And frankly, who cares? Anyone who matters will see the nonsense for what it is. You know who you are. Let that be enough. The bottom line, however, is you'll have gotten your point across. I am not a good target. Or, in the words of a very good friend of mine, who recently shared how she drew her line in the sand with someone, she simply said straight out, I am not your bitch. Conversation over, end of story. There's nothing more to be said, right? Now, comment below and let me know whether or not you can relate to any of this. Let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Now, this is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself and your healing and recovery journey. If you want the pain to stop, you want to find a way out of the fog, confusion, self-doubt, fear, and anxiety brought on by having been exposed to empathy-impaired emotional manipulators who feel entitled to hurt you, and worse yet, blame you for the hurt they cause. If that's you, the link is in the description below this video. And for the record, I'm coaching women over 40 here, but if you're a man, you're welcome to apply. Now, the path to standing up for yourself really is the path to telling the truth, speaking your truth. And the path to standing your ground is really just about being willing to follow through and back yourself on whatever it is you've communicated, in particular in reference to your wants, needs, boundaries, preferences, and standards. It's important to recognize that not telling the truth causes a lot more drama than necessary. If we don't tell the truth, we often feel worse simply because we haven't taken care of ourselves. We have failed ourselves, abandoned ourselves, for real, by not saying the thing we actually needed to say. So that truth-telling is necessary if we want to live from a self-loving and self-respecting place aligned with our personal integrity. And also, let's be honest, telling the truth just feels good. It feels empowering. It feels good to get off the denial and enabling bus and stop just going along to get along. 
Now, can it be scary at first? For sure. Especially for the untreated codependents and champion people pleasers out there. But I promise you this, the path to emotional freedom, personal empowerment, this is it. So go slow if you need to, practice with safe others if necessary, but give yourself the gift of being willing to speak your truth as often as necessary, no matter who does or does not like it. Just give yourself permission. And when it's hard, notice how your lack of clarity and lack of truth telling is blocking you, how it's affecting you in your own life. Then notice how it makes you feel about yourself and others. What's the impact? What is the energy that you're showing up with on a day-to-day -day basis as a result of not speaking your truth? How's that working for you? Let's be real. There are a lot of people out there medicating and sedating themselves on a daily basis, <clears throat> whether that be with alcohol, food, or any other addictive compulsive coping strategy, while their soul literally dies a slow and painful death, going through life like the walking dead. Numb to everything except anger, of course. For no other reason than they haven't mustered the strength, the courage, the self-love, the self-esteem, not to mention the personal integrity, to stand up and say what needs to be said, in particular to the destructive narcissists in their life. Don't be that person. There is a far better way to live, I assure you. Again, give yourself permission to tell the truth to be a truth teller, a truth seeker and truth speaker. Acknowledge that it's okay. It's good and helpful for me to have a voice. Clarity is actually kind. Speaking the truth is an act of love, even when they don't like it, even when what's true is hard and ugly and they don't wanna hear it. It is still an act of love. And when it's scary, you might want to write it out first. Write out what you want to say and see how it feels in your body. Practice in the mirror. Remember to breathe, then muster the courage to say it. And if the situation calls for it, which it sometimes does, consider saying what needs to be said in a letter. I've done this in my own life where the intensity of the drama and trauma was so high that I knew I would never be heard if I so much as attempted to broach the subject eye to eye. Now, I'm not a girl that's afraid of confrontation, but I'm not stupid either. There are times when the people we are dealing with are so emotionally crippled that we know we have no chance of being able to say what needs to be said. No chance of being heard. And when that's the case, write a letter. Not a poison pen letter, but a letter where you are finally giving that wounded inner child inside of you a voice, or the adult version of you, uh, the opportunity to speak it, say it, and let it be known. When you do so, you're advocating for yourself in a way that needs to happen for you to be able to turn a corner, be free, find peace, crystal clear communication. The reality is, in some situations, it may be the best chance you have of being heard. But even if they can't or won't hear you, in spite of the plain black and white truth of the matter staring them in the face right off the page, know that you've done your part. You said what needed to be said. You spoke your truth. You drew a line in the sand. You advocated for yourself with dignity, integrity, self-love, and self-respect, no matter who chooses to believe you or not. At the end of the day, we stand up for ourselves and speak our truth for us, not them. Remember that. It isn't about them anymore. Let the chips fall where they fall while you walk away with your head held high and your self-esteem stronger and more intact, with more peace in your heart. No more living a lie, selling your soul to the devil, sacrificing yourself for the comfort of people who do not give a flying bleep about you or your well-being. Anyone who needs you to live a lie in order to maintain the relationship is not for you. They are not meant to be in your life, no matter who they are. If a relationship cannot survive something as fundamentally healthy and necessary as you being able to speak your truth, then honey, that relationship is not for you, period. You are meant for more, better, much, much better. I promise you, it's time now. And on that note, I'm going to call it a wrap. But before I go, you should know the Ascension class is open for enrollment.
Now this is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself, you're ready to shift your identity, master the law of attraction, heal your relationship with money, and put a full stop end to the limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging behavior that are holding you back and preventing you from living your best life. If you're ready to reinvent yourself from the inside out, create your dream life by design, and finally become the you you were always meant to be, click the link in the description below to apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team.